What should your shoulders be doing when you are doing a chaturanga or a push-up? Should they be pressed back and fixed in place as sort of an anchor upon which to move? Or should they be protracted forward to fire up your pecs and more, and more be focused on the prime mover of the action? Maybe they should be doing both in different positions. Maybe they, sh they should be incorporating more of a dynamic movement. Let's check it out in today's episode and see if we can apply some basic biomechanical principles to enhance your movement. Let's check it out. Real quick, my name is Anthony Davis. This is Shapeshift Wellness, where we explore the science of fitness, yoga, and meditation. I just released a shoulder anatomy course on the bones, joints, and motion of the shoulder, so go to my website and check that out. It is available as part of the All Access membership, or you can buy the course individually. Now, let's learn about chaturangas and push-ups and what your shoulder should be doing. Okay, so I have drawn some different views here. So essentially on the top, we've got a side view of a person and on the bottom, we have a bird's eye view of a person. So we'll draw the shoulder blades on together and see what might be happening. So on the left, let's also make a, a distinction here. On the left, we will have the top position of a chaturanga and on the right, we will have the bottom bottom position of a chaturanga. So if our arms essentially are reaching um, from here, back, and then down, uh, excuse me, we're at the top. So if we start here and we are reaching forward or here, and we are basically just reaching forward towards the ground, and then we end in a position where we're here with our elbows basically back down here and our arms like that. Then where should our shoulder bl uh, blades be in that uh, transition? So I wanna point out first here that we have two different movements. So the idea that your shoulder blades should remain in one single position is a bit silly. That the shoulder blades should be in the same position when your arms are straight in a plank position where you're here and you're just in a plank, that that shoulder blade position should be the same as when you bend your elbows. And that doesn't really make a lot of sense. So if we apply the principles of um, uh, tensegrity, of regional interdependence, if we understand the concept of scapulohumeral rhythm, then we understand that where the arms go, the shoulder blades follow, generally speaking. So if the arm reaches forward, the shoulder blades go forward. If the arms reach uh, forward and up, the shoulder blades go forward and up. And if the arms reach back, the shoulder blades go back. So we have two different motions and they are doing the opposite thing. So in one, in the plank, our arms are reaching forward. Where do you think our shoulder blades should go? Probably forward. And in the next, when we actually get to a chaturanga or the bottom of a push-up, either way, our elbows are going back and where's our shoulder blade gonna go? Probably back. So it would look something like this if we kind of get rid of um, some of our arm stuff here, that when the arms, uh, actually I'll, I will draw in the arms here. So the arms just a little bit are basically reaching forward here and they are reaching back here okay and then that's so that's our side view um, from the top it's going to look like this our arms are basically straight underneath us um, and then our arms reach back It, when we get to the bottom, okay? So the, the top-down view looks a little silly. I realize those arms look like little T-Rex arms, but bear with me. Now let's draw the shoulder blades. So in the top of a push-up position, we might see that our shoulder blades actually will go forward. So our shoulder blades here go forward because we're pushing, we're pushing the ground away from us. Whereas when we lower down into a chaturanga, the shoulder blades go backwards because the ground, we're lowering the ground 
to us or we're pull it's we're lowering ourselves to the ground but the ground is moving relatively towards us and our elbows are moving elbows are moving back and so the shoulder blades do the same thing from the top down view what it's going to look like is that the shoulder blades will be more out here versus when we lower down they should actually pull closer to the spine so here we have the shoulder blades moving out and when we lower down we have the shoulder blades moving in because as we draw the elbows back, the shoulder blades naturally want to go back. Now there's some argument that you should just keep them in that back position the whole time. But if you keep your, the, the problem is that the glenoid fossa, you want to just generally, part of the reason that the shoulder blade has to go with the arm is because the glenoid fossa is going to continue to point in whichever direction the arm goes. And that's going to allow you maximum surface area for the um, glenohumeral joint. So if we have a glenoid fossa, which is part of your shoulder blade, so here's your shoulder blade, and then here is your glenoid fossa. And that's your, let's call that your acromion. So here is the glenoid fossa. Now, in reality, from a side view, it's going to look like this. So we've got this essentially. Um, and then we'd have like a coracoid process and we'd have like a shelf for the acromion. But in here is your um, glenoid fossa. And so we want to point that, we want to shine a flashlight of our glenoid fossa towards whichever way our arm is going so that the ball and the socket, so then we have our humerus, which is going to look like a ball and a socket. So this ball is going to go right here and we want that to have the most surface area. So if we start to angle the glenoid fossa in a funny angle and we don't uh, allow the glenoid fossa to follow where the arm goes, then we just don't have as much bony support um, on which the glenoid can rest. So if the glenoid fossa is right now pointing outwards because I have my shoulder blade back and then I start to reach forward, so I reach forward, I want my glenoid fossa to go this way. I want it to point forward so that the head of the humerus has a bony support upon which to rest so that my weight, as I hold myself on the um, ground, the weight of the force pushing into my arm like this, this is my humeral head and this is my glenoid fossa, that the humeral head meets bony support. That way, um, it's not like this, where it's trying to shear backwards. Now, it's not like you're really gonna dislocate your arm or anything like that, but why would you not want a little bit of extra bony support? It's gonna make the uh, movement a little bit more stable. So I would encourage uh, a movement in this, I would encourage rather than having a fixed position, um, whether that's fixed forward, which kind of fires up the pecs, which is the prime mover of the activity, so I get that logic, or firing it back, which kind of creates a stable anchor upon which to move, I, I, I kind of get that too. But really, the shoulder blades move with the arms, so if we're moving, then we should have two different shoulder positions. When the arms go forward, the shoulder blades go forward. When the arms go back, the shoulder blades go back. Make sense? Now the arms are not going overhead, so in this case we wouldn't have this, we would not have the shoulder blades going up by the ears because that's not really where the arms are going in this motion. Make sense? So I hope that helps. If you wanna learn more about shoulder anatomy, again, I just released a shoulder anatomy course. Go to my website, check that out. There are some preview um, lessons available, so you can always do that or get in the free area where I actually have a shoulder impingement course available for you to test drive. Thank you for watching. See you next time.